Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful soft pretzels. Now soft pretzels may seem hard but they're actually pretty simple to make. We're going to be doing two different styles, uh, both of which are fine for you to do at home. The ones on the left are uh, boiled and the ones on the right are not. It's an optional step and this is just to show you kind of the final product of what it looks like whether you boil them or not. But so we're going to get started soon and I hope you enjoy. To start our pretzels, in this bowl we have one and a half cups of warm water and we're going to be adding in our packet or two and a quarter teaspoons of our instant yeast. I'm using instant yeast, but if you have regular active dry yeast, that works as well. Then we're also going to add in our one tablespoon of sugar to our yeast and water mixture and just give everything a quick mix. Alright, now we're just going to leave it for about 10 minutes and let the yeast start to warm up and puff up. Alright, so it's been a few minutes and now our yeast is completely dissolved. And next up, I'm going to be adding in one teaspoon of salt. And then using a fork, I'm going to start mixing it into the water. Once it's all mixed together, I'm going to start adding in my flour. Now in this bowl here, I have about three cups of flour, which I'm going to start gradually adding bit by bit to my water and yeast mixture. And then once that flour is mostly mixed in, I'm going to add a little bit more flour and I'm going to keep going like this until all of my flour is added into this mixture. Alright, once you have all your flour mixed in, then your dough should look something like this. Still very wet, but as you can see it's starting to come together into more of a solid mass and all the flour is mixed in. Next up we're going to try to move on to our kneading. So what we're going to do is sprinkle some flour. Uh, this bowl has about one and a half to two cups of flour and we're going to start by taking some flour and putting it all over our work surface. Next we're going to take our bowl of dough and we're going to empty it out onto our floured surface here. And then something I like to do is just to take a scraper here just to get all the last little dough bits out of the bowl. It allows you to use all the dough that you've made and it makes cleaning the bowls afterwards a little bit easier. Okay, and our bowl can now be put off to the side. I'll just scrape everything off the fork. And that can also be put aside. Now before we start kneading this, I'm just going to take even more flour and put it on the top here because it is still quite wet. And now we can start kneading together our dough. So just trying to kind of move it around a little bit, incorporate the flour you just put on it into it, and just kind of play with it. I find that this pretzel dough is very soft and fluffy which makes it lots of fun to knead. Now as you start kneading in the flour, you'll feel it start to become more wet and sticky. And then we're just going to keep adding in 
flour as we need it, as you feel it get wet. What I'm doing here for kneading, um, I'm not really trying to stretch out the dough very much. I'm more just trying to massage it and really mix everything together and uh, really let that dough absorb the new flour that I keep adding to it. Now this kneading process for the pretzel dough usually takes about three to five minutes or so depending on how fast or how aggressively you're kneading your dough. It also depends on how much you're making. If you're making a double batch, then kneading will obviously take uh, a bit longer since you're going to be working with more dough. What we're trying to do right now is get it to a point where it's still soft and, soft and tacky, but it's not sticking to your skin. Like you can see here, it's really sticking to my skin. So it's still too wet and we're going to be adding in more flour. The key to this dough also is to really make sure you're adding in your flour bit by bit and not adding it in all at once. This dough I find with kneading can really take a lot of flour and sometimes if you add it all at once you might mistakenly think that after only three cups of flour your dough is good and ready to go when really it could definitely take on an extra cup of flour. All right, so this is starting to feel pretty good. It's getting to be tacky, but not so tacky that it's really sticking to my skin. You can see as I pull my hand off here, it's not uh, leaving behind dough on my hand like it was earlier. So I'm just gonna finish kneading this up and get it to be a really soft and smooth texture. All right, so there we go, there's our dough. It could be a little bit softer, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at right now. So our next step is to move our flour a bit out of the way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start sectioning off our dough. So I'm going to roll it into a little bit of a log here. Stretch it out a bit just to make it easier to separate all right, now what we're gonna do is cut it in half. And this is enough dough to make about eight to 10 pretzels. So you're gonna wanna cut the dough into that many chunks. I usually, for measurement, go by each chunk should be about a third of a cup measurement. So if you have a third of a cup uh, measuring cup, then you can use that as a bit of a reference while you're cutting up your dough. And they don't have to be perfect either because your pretzels can end up being different sizes. All right, so now what we're gonna do is move on to our rolling phase. So what I'm gonna start by doing is uh, just gonna even out these balls a little bit, taking dough from some of the bigger ones and adding them to the smaller ones just because I like mine to all be around the same size. And then I'm gonna start kind of shaping them more into balls and then moving them together just to be off to the side in one corner. All right, so now that I've got them all rolled up and most of them are off in one corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tea towel here and I'm going to cover them up, which will keep them from drying out while I work on rolling them. There we go. So now, to make our pretzel shape, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by rolling this out into a long rope. If you're having trouble rolling your pretzels out, and you find that they're just kind of slipping back and forth on the counter. Uh, you could have too much flour on your counter, so just kind of moving some of your flour off your counter will help. 
Or something else you can do is put a damp tea towel on your counter and then put a cutting board on top of it. And that'll give you a nice surface with enough friction that you can get your dough rolled out nicely. Okay, so now I've got my rope here. I'll just kind of do it so you can see. That's how long it is. Uh, so it's about four of my hands long. And now what we're gonna do is a fun little twist. So if you want to, you can uh, put these in whatever shape you want. But for the traditional pretzel shape, what you do is you take the two ends and then holding it like this, you're gonna give the middle a spin, catch it, put it down, and then bring the ends down like so. And then we'll just space it out a little bit. The ends are a bit long, but you can see here if I tuck them under, we have our nice little pretzel shape. So now we're going to do that for all of our dough balls. So before we move on, I'm going to show you the twisting motion again in case you're having trouble getting it. So it's a little difficult to do with this camera angle, but basically what you're doing is you're throwing the bottom of it together to create this bend. And as a slow motion way of doing it, you can just hold the tips of the pretzel dough and rotate the bottom here to create this twist widen the bottom a little bit and then fold these two ends down and then you can always play with it a little bit stretch it out maybe tuck the ends underneath and then widen the holes and then there we go our little pretzel now this next step for the pretzels is optional and I'm going to be doing it with half of the pretzels so you can see what it's like when you when you do this step and when you don't do this step. Now next what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be boiling some of our pretzels. This will give them a bit of a darker color and a little bit of that uh, kind of pretzel-y taste that most people are familiar with. So on the stove here, I've got about uh, four and a half cups of boiling water and it's been boiling for a bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to it just to kind of make up for some of the steam that has come out since we've started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quarter cup of baking soda to this water. You'll hear it foam up a bit and then you'll see it start to settle down. Alright, now with our baking soda added, what we're going to do is take one of our pretzels here and we're just going to dunk it in the water for about 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, that's 20 seconds. We'll take it out here. And then just put it on this tray to drip dry. You want to make sure that you don't boil them for longer than 20 to 30 seconds, otherwise they'll end up getting a bit of a metallic taste. Also, I should mention that while the pretzels are in here boiling, I'm also just kind of constantly stirring down the bubbles that are in the pot from the baking soda. Right, and now that my last pretzel's done, I'm going to turn the stove off and scoop my pretzel out. And then I'm just going to let these dry over here for a minute. And while they're drying, I can start doing the egg wash on my non-boiled pretzels. All right, so in this bowl here, I have my egg wash, uh, which can't really see very well, but it's just one egg that I've beaten up with a fork. And then I'll be using one of these little brushes here to wash it on to the pretzel. If you don't have one of these, then what you can do is just actually dip the pretzels into the egg wash instead. So these ones that I have on top here are my non-boiled pretzels. And I'm just going to dab this on very lightly all over the pretzel. 
And then while I'm doing this, I'm also going to be preheating my oven to 425 Fahrenheit. All right, so now that our pretzels have been egg washed, I'm going to be adding some salt on top. I like to use kosher salt. Uh, I find it's a good amount of salt to give it the really salty bite in some spots. So I'm just going to be taking my salt and sprinkling it on close to the pretzel. I find with these, if you try to hold your hand up really high while you're sprinkling them, then the salt tends to just bounce off the pretzel and land uh, on the parchment paper beside it. So just give all of these a quick little sprinkle. Maybe then go back over some spots that didn't really get any. Nothing too specific, just kind of whatever your preference. If you like really salty pretzels, then you can add a lot of salt. If you're going for a sweeter pretzel, you can also put uh, brown sugar on top of these instead of salt. All right, now that those are done, we're gonna move on to our other pretzels that we boiled. So I'm going to put these onto the tray. Now they're cooled and I can touch them. And they are also keeping their shape a little bit better now that they've been boiled. If you're dipping them, uh, then you can dip both sides of these as well. But for brushing uh, our egg on, I'm just brushing it on the top side. Okay, and then now our egg wash is on, we're gonna add some more of our kosher salt. And if you're wondering how much kosher salt uh, or flaky salt or whatever kind of salt you're using, I just have maybe like two tablespoons or so of salt in this little cup. All right, there we go. So now that all of our pretzels have been egg washed and salted, we're just gonna wait a couple minutes for our oven to finish preheating and then we're gonna put them in the oven. Okay, so right now our pretzels have just finished about 10 minutes of baking in the oven. Let's see if we can get a little peek here at how they're doing. They're looking pretty nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our oven setting here to broil. Clear that off, we're gonna switch it to broil on high for about five minutes and we're going to keep a really close eye on these while they're broiling for the last few minutes. Okay, our pretzels are now done broiling so we're going to turn the oven off and take them out of the oven. Okay, so as you can see, we have our two different pretzels here. The ones on the left are the ones that we boiled first, and then the ones on the right are the ones that we just baked. So as you can see, the ones on the left do have a bit of a darker color, uh, and the darker color is more even spread around the pretzel. Uh, whereas the ones on the right, I probably should have turned the pan around about halfway through broiling just to make sure they got brown all even all over all the pretzels. Uh, but if you aren't able to boil them, if you don't have time or you're just feeling lazy and want to skip this step, you definitely can and the pretzels will turn out great either way. Well, thanks for joining in guys and I hope you like making these pretzels. They make great movie snacks uh, or just really a snack for any time. And they're not quite as hard as you might think they might be. Alright, thank you again and we'll see you next time.